Hmm. I think we need better gears. Hello everybody, I am Ben from Team Panic. There we go, new gears. And the question you're probably asking yourself is why did we need new gears? And what on earth was going on with this setup in here? So this guy here was working, but there are herringbone gears uh, on this system. So you can see, actually we've got a little bit more play in there than I was expecting. Basically, I was trying to make sure that the weapon stayed in the middle of the robot by having the herringbone gears lock it in place and not allowing it to move side to side, which, Unfortunately did not work at all uh, and the herringbone gears still allowed the thing to walk which was because of what didn't get a huge herringbone angle on these because if I did that then the gears just didn't mesh together at all. Uh, and I thought everything was going to be fine and then yeah I did some testing and the herringbone somehow I've stuffed something up I've really messed them up and so they don't mesh properly together, which means that at slow speeds, they can catch and cause the weapon to just not spin at all. It seemed it was fine at higher speeds, but I don't really want to be running quite that high. So I decided that it was just time to go back to some regular tooth gears on both sides of these things, run for its electronics to test this out. But we're actually going to go ahead and do brand new electronics because I've just got in some Malinkis with the brand new firmware. So I'm keen to try this out. Speaking of electronics, we have our electronics box out the back here, which you can see very easily fits a Malinky. It'll also fit a switch, no problem, and a battery. And there are little gaps out the front here where my thumb is that have space for wires to leave, which the whole point of that was gonna to be to run wires along here and then down the outside down to the motor mounting points, which are down the bottom here. And obviously this side will have a second set for the weapon motor. But I was just looking at it. We have nice carbon fiber tube that goes from here all the way down to here. The only problem is one of these is blocked up by um, some super glue. As I was gluing all this together, we got a nice blockage in under here. Uh, so we actually need to drill out that blockage to allow some wiring through. But then we should actually be able to wire from here straight down through this side and then out the bottom here, which will then just wrap around and connect into the motor over here, which will be great. The only thing with that is it means that we have to do wiring in place. Normally I like to have wiring as I've done it with run for it over here, which is that uh, you can take some screws out and then all of the entire wiring just comes immediately out of the robot, which yeah, we're not gonna be able to do when our wires feed directly through the carbon fiber rods holding the thing together. And so we're on to wiring. And in this case, I'm actually using uh, this very, very long old USB cable. Basically I broke one of the connectors on it. So I cut it up and I'm just gonna steal wire from it to get this to work. Now we should have everything drilled out so that we can literally just like feed wire up through here into the battery box if everything goes well. Yeah, there we go, cool. So we've got wire that goes all the way from the battery box down to here and you can see it's gonna be long enough to make its way around to the motor housing which is where this bit is down here. Um, but yeah, so that's that which means what we now need is the rest of the electronics. And speaking of, there's really not a lot here because the Malinky makes our life amazingly easy. So we've got a Malinky, we have a uh, battery connector, we have this little guy, which is a switch and a light combined into a single board, which the camera is having a tr hard time focusing on. This, by the way, I wouldn't use for a spinner, but for this, it's not gonna draw that much power, so it should be fine. Then we've got 350 to 1N20s, and that is it. Um, yeah, we just need to now cut some wires and solder some stuff together.
Okay, so skipping forward a little bit, we've got the Malinke all wired up. So the Malinke is set up for three motors and then the switch for the battery all ready to go essentially. Now, the one thing I have done here, which I haven't done all that often in a lot of other builds, but I did it for this build because it's kind of important, is I have color coded everything properly. So, I mean, red and black you should always normally do as uh, power and ground because that just helps you make sure everything inside the system is correct. If you're using red and black wires to hook your motors up, you can get confused between battery wires and motor wires and then uh, lots of things can break if you mess that up. So I've gone green and white with the motors stuff, but I've also done this specifically so that green is the top row of the Malinke and white is the bottom row of the Malinke. And this basically means I can then use previous builds that I've done to work out which way around these wires go into the motors. And it should mean that I'll get this uh, perfect first time round and won't need to unsolder and resolder wires. For the weapon, it's actually not that important, but for the drive, it's very, very important because if you mess up and solder the, right, the wires backwards to the motor, then the whole motor will drive backwards, which messes up mixing and a whole bunch of other things. And when you're like me and use the same controller for every robot in your collection, you don't want to keep changing the mixing over and over again just because you messed up the wiring. So it's much better to be able to color code things and know exactly where each wire is supposed to go. I'm probably not gonna show the last little bit on camera because literally all I'm gonna do is strip the ends of these four wires and, oh sorry, six wires and solder them into the back of the motors. Yeah, I am really liking how this thing is looking, uh, but it is moment of truth time. I need to plug in a battery, uh, get the Malinke program, because at the moment it is brand spanking new, uh, and then we need to test this thing out. I also do need to know uh, how we actually go when it comes to balance, because right now the design does have fins out the back here, which I don't have printed and probably won't have done in time for this video. Uh, but it may not actually need them. However, if I push too hard, it does fall backwards. So there is a tipping point somewhere that we need to work out and probably do actually need those stabilizers so that the front end stays on the ground. But I do wonder if the battery is gonna force that tipping point or not. Oh yeah, okay. <laughs> yep, having the battery in place, we do not sit forward at all. Okay, so I lied. I have uh, sat down and printed the final part for uh, Mini Mammoth here. However, that is because Mini Mammoth is currently overweight. It's sitting at about 155 grams with the uh, extension on the back, which is a lot. Uh, five grams is a lot to cut out of a robot, but I think it's actually gonna be possible with uh, Mini Mammoth. So, we're going to do a fourth video in the series uh, detailing the ways in which I try and cut down weight out of Mini Mammoth and see what we can do to actually fix this problem. But as there was going to be a fourth video in this series, I figured it was about time we actually got this thing driving, running around, uh, doing some tests. So that's what we're about to do right now. Uh, normally I do all of my tests in my uh, test box. However, as this is just a rotary flipper, it should be okay to be driving around on a tabletop. Okay, that's a little bit interesting. One of those drive sides is a little bit stiffer than the other, so it doesn't go perfectly straight. And also that keep away stick is annoying. Oh, wrong way. Ah, okay, we might have trouble getting leverage on things.
Okay, interesting. We may actually also not have uh, a ton of um, torque here, which we might need to then change this motor over for a higher gear ratio, which will give us more torque on the hull. Uh, let's see if we can actually like flip something in an optimal position. Okay, cool. So that's a good start. Mm. I'm gonna have to uh, look into this motor. It's funky. Oh, okay. That'd be why it's not driving correctly. I need to sort out my mixing a little bit better. I thought I had fixed that already, but apparently I hadn't. Uh, anyway, let's go ahead and see if we can flick this empty chassis here. Okay. Yeah, so grip is gonna be an issue. That's something we're gonna have to work on. We might even need to redesign the wedge entirely to get that to work. I don't know, it's gonna be interesting to find out. Uh, anyway, so there you go, this is uh, the Mini Mammoth build. Basically working, which is cool. Just now need to go ahead and uh, get the weight down. Yeah, so I hope you guys have enjoyed that one and I will see you in the next video.